Hi and welcome, I'm Tom, your host, and this is the Dropcast Movie Poster Podcast. This format is part of the Instagram blog Drop, and you can find us under at DropMacOfficial. We do reviews, news, and interviews that all have to do with the film business. In this show, we structured it a little bit differently because the first two episodes I used to do the releases in the beginning and have an interview, a long interview in the end. And now this will change and we will do releases in the beginning and have a focused look on one single print. So today we will have the focus on uh, Chris Thornley aka Raid 71's Hey Joe by Bottleneck Gallery. And um, as you can see here on the left there are all the different uh, pieces that we're going to talk in the release part about. And we will start out with our first one, The Shining. The Shining is a screen uh, or screen print by Scott Woolston and it was released by Bottleneck Gallery. And Bottleneck Gallery did also a variant for that, um, which you can see in uh, yellow or which is uh, in yellow available and it's hand numbered edition by uh, with only 40 versions of and the uh, red one I have in a picture here is uh, there are 100 available. Uh, the regular screen print is $45 and um, variant edition is $55. It's a very cool I, a very cool edition with the house with the uh, with the house on top with the, uh, the hotel on top especially um, and um, the axe which is very um, iconic for the movie. So this piece by uh, Wilson is very great and I appreciate this kind of style. Okay, our second one will be the Mandalorian uh, series by Dave Perillo, who's, who did this also for uh, Bottleneck Gallery. So the first one is uh, Chapter 2, The Child um, from, uh, from the show, from TV show The Mandalorian. And it's also a screen print and it measures 18 by 12 inches. It's a hand numbered edition of $240 each, and you can get it with the other one in the set, um, which would be 80 for both. And uh, this second one is chapter three, The Sin, um, also, by the, uh, also for the TV show, The Mandalorian, and um, also the same size, 18 by 12 inches, and this is also 200, edition of 200. Um, I like both of them. This is kind of a comic, a cool comic steel and has like iconic moments from each episode in it. I reviewed it online as well. And um, in the first one, the chapter two one, you can see how uh, the, um, I forgot, I forgot the name of the beast. But yeah, it was, um, spoiler on this, uh, this is the Signia later on in the show. Um, the Mandalorian is going to get it. They are one Kind of tribe now and uh, this is a cool uh, way to resemble it and there was the, this moment where um, baby yoda showed his force skills or the child showed his force skills which are very um very strong he's very strong in force and in the third um episode um there was more um the, the different ways the sin was um uh shown here if he did if he turned against his own kind also uh, if he turned against the code and this was all very um, interesting to see uh, how this turned out and uh, that they picked or that they picked the moment where um, all the Mandalorians came to help um, our main character very interesting choice okay um, our next one will be a timed edition and it's by none other than Laurent Durieux um, the screen print, print poster measures at 24 inches by 36 inches. It is printed by DL Screen Printing and it will be available for I think over a week until the until April 30th and um, this is for this has also a, a cause and this is for direct relief for the for all the um, humanitarian work that is done right now during this COVID crisis. And um, it's a real cool piece. It got like the, the this architecture style. Uh, it's not a, really a movie poster, but I think I wanted to include it because Lauren Durier did a lot of cool movie stuff. And to have one piece um, like that is a very good choice uh, when it comes to the timed edition. And uh, it also includes um, very memorable architecture styles. 
um, for example, or design styles when it comes, for example, to the chair, we can see um, on the left side there. So very cool piece, so try uh, to get it. It is uh, shipped worldwide around June and it is $60 a pop. Okay, next one is also by uh, Mondo, a Mondo release, and the artist is Wiley Beckert. And this is a 24 uh, by 36 inch screen printer poster edition of 100 and, no, oh, never mind, I'm sorry, this is, this is the variant edition of 75, uh, also printed by DL Screen Printing. And this was only in the US territory, uh, or uh, only US territory in Japan um, available, which is kind of sad because it's a very nice piece by uh, Wiley Beckert. And um, it symbolizes or has a lot of uh, different uh, features in it. When you, when you look close, um, when you look close here, uh, you can see all the women in, uh, in the colored, in the regular version, that they are all orange, and um, you can see it even more clearly, the, the, distinct, the distinction between them, and the, the, the color where this kind of orangey and the white um, that is uh, played with. And you can see it here in the lettering that they use the orange here, and which is really cool. It got the, it's got the stick here, which is uh, very iconic for the movie as well, and um, how or this, this message and how this character is um, implemented in the movie. Very great uh, way to design a poster and to like take a look at this, this movie from this perspective. Um, the next one is also another Mondo piece and it is the um, Oliver Barrett um, variant version of the Godzilla piece. And I think the, the, this came out, or did they already send it out, I think? Or at least the APs they sent out, because he got the APs already, and I think a week after the drop, after this was the part of the first Godzilla drop of the Godzilla show, uh, Mondo used to, uh, or wanted to do it during uh, South by Southwest. And this was canceled, obviously, uh, because of the COVID crisis again. And this should also only to the uh, US again, and uh, US and Canada. And um, the variant is edition of 125, 24 inches by 30, 36, uh, 36, and um, the price is $75 or was $75. And uh, the regular version uh, doesn't have the cool um, Japanese lettering, which I really, really like, and uh, especially the, this kind of beige uh, background uh, he used. Um, brings out more of a contrast than the regular um, regular a gray version which was uh, edition of 250 the, the regular one yeah really cool print uh, all the uh, all the people who got one uh, they're really lucky this is a really really nice piece uh, the next one we will look at is um, this piece by Matt Taylor who did this for Inherent Vice. There was a screening in February at the Roxy Theater in San Francisco, and he did this poster for this show. This is a um, uh, hand-numbered uh, 150 copies piece, 18 by 24, so a little smaller. And um, yeah, Matt Taylor always has these crazy colors, and uh, the way he shows uh, this, the, the idea of the movie, and um, I think it's it's, very a, a very nice piece um, if you like the movie and if you're um, into bold colors and want to set a statement if you have probably white walls in your apartment or maybe black ones even it will pop really out it's, it looks really really cool and um, I think for Matt Taylor fans definitely a must-have and uh, yeah this is uh, I think I forgot to say you can all you can still buy this uh, at Spoke Art and it's a $40 uh, for this wonderful piece. So check that out. And you, we will also have another spoke art piece, which is sadly sold out by Tom Whalen. This is the Spirited, Spirited Away version. Um, this was only 12 inches by 18 inches and it was a three color screen print um, in an edition of 100. And for the people who can't read this, it is Spirited Away. You can also see the little, um, uh, Miyazaki uh, face here in the bottom and uh, the iconic characters, the, this castle and uh, yeah, Chihiro on top, very cool. Um, as always, 
very Tom Whalen, the, the way he uses the colors. And um, the, I also really enjoy the, this simple but elegant way he structured this poster. A uh, very, very good job. And uh, sadly, I didn't have my uh, tax refund yet, so I couldn't get me one. But maybe on the aftermarket, I will get lucky. Okay, our next one is by Gray Matter Art. And um, let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys. And this one is uh, was released, I think, in 2016 uh, already by Flory in a, in a paper version and in a, uh, or in, in two different versions, um, definitely. And the colorways were off, uh, were uh, different. And now this came out as a holo variant, which looks really cool. Um, sadly, I, I can't portray this really good uh, on, on, on the screen here, but check out the Gray Matter website. You can see it. It's a very, very cool print. It was a, a timed edition. And um, so everybody who got one uh, should be lucky because this one is really cool, especially with Star Lord in the middle and uh, like flying upside down with the crazy colors. And um, yeah, they probably really pop when you have them in hand and uh, look at this very cool foil variant. Okay, and the last one we're gonna look at today is this one here by um, uh, Christian uh, Chris, Christian Eres. It's a 24 inch by 30, 36 inch uh, edition of two, uh, 125. Uh, it's also printed by DL screen printing, $45. And um, this is also released by um, what's what they called i'm sorry <laughs> gray matter art I'm, I'm sorry gray matter art and they did a really cool art that the artist did a really cool job with uh the the just the three colors or basically three colors i want to say four is it four four or three colors so uh they were used which is really really cool and um the the it really pops when you look at the the art or the orange or this kind of sun and also the the arnold schwarzenegger um character and it pops with this gray in, in the back and also with the green they they complement each other very, very well and it's a really really cool piece and i, I uh there are a couple out there i think that i think there's a matt ferguson predator one which is really cool and a couple others i, I really enjoyed um so keep coming up with cool ideas for this uh for the predator movie and um yeah christian Harris, good job on this one i really enjoyed it and now we will move over um, to our uh, last one, which is, the, as I said before, the Hey Joe one, which came out over for a bottleneck uh, gallery. And um, we actually had the time to talk to Chris Thornley, AKA Raid 71. So check this out. Yeah, welcome. This is the poster release section of the movie poster podcast by Dropcast. And I'm really happy to have Raid 71, aka Chris Thornley with me. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, all considering, seeing as we're trapped indoors at the moment. Yeah, how, how is this uh, working on the end of you? Does it change anything to you? Uh, or, no. Or <laughs> uh, but, uh, I have a studio connected to my house, mm -hmm. uh, so I never really commuted anywhere. Uh, but I'm, I'm based in, in rural Scotland, mm -hmm. uh, so I have about one or two cars passing my house in a day. Well, that's, the, that's nice. Yeah, so I, I don't see people most of the time, so I'm not really, no, no real change. Okay, that's great. Um, so since this is a kind of a new format, because I uh, singled out the releases, we just want to talk about a single release uh, today, but I would gladly have you back for a long interview session cool. in the future. Yeah, it'd be great to chat. All right. Uh, so the release we are going to talk about is the Hey Joe one that came out by uh, Bottle and Gallery. There was um, a regular version, which was the Holofoil, I think it was. And there yes. was the, um, the paper version, I think the variant, right? Yes, that's right. Okay. So um, we want to look at, in this podcast, we want to look at this um, kind of print and how you how it came like from from the idea or how Bottleneck approached you to all the way that it was sold by Bottleneck on the website. So okay, can, so can you walk um, us through this process a little bit? Yeah, so it it's actually goes back. I've done some work for Bottleneck with uh, Blade Runner before, mm -hmm. and they were going to New York Comic Con, and there was a big promotion for the release of the film. The first one you did was with the uh, with the umbrellas, right? 
So that that was for a, an early group show for uh, Blade Runner. Yeah, is there a difference between the uh, the landscape and the portrait one? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, it, or were I they think for that... the same show? Pardon? Were they for the same show or? Uh, they... No, so that so that's going that's going far back to a, an early group <laughs> show, uh, bottleneck. Um, they did. I think it was the soundtrack was released, and mm. I think there was about forty artists involved in that. Uh, so I'd always been a big fan of Blade Runner. So when 2049 came out, Bottleneck approached me and said uh, they were wanting three different artists with three different styles to promote the film's release. So in 2017 at New York Comic Con, uh, myself and two other artists, I think they gave about 2,000 posters of each film away for free. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Uh, and, yeah, so, so that was nice. So that was like a nice promotional job uh, and in those two years I'm just getting emails every other day saying are you going to release it as a screen print are you going to do it as a screen print mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of built up over time where Bottleneck turned around and said look we're going to release it as a screen print so originally not meant to be a, a, a kind of screen printed poster mm -hmm. just a, a kind of free giveaway promotional poster okay and um, how was the um... How, how did they approach you about uh, the Blade Runner 2049 project? Is it did they say, hey, let's do this uh, because we have already your first um, or the first Blade Runner uh, and let's make the series? Uh, yeah, it's um, the tra I think the trailer had just come out. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, they, they knew I was kind of a fan of Blade Runner anyway. Yeah, uh, who is so, these days? <laughs> yes, so uh, so I'd, we didn't know anything about the film at the time, so we only had the trailer okay. to go off. Uh, yeah. yeah, and the I originally pitched them an idea with the uh, with a hand uh, holding mm -hmm. the kind of iconic gun. Yeah, let me let me pull it up for the people to see. I could pull it up now. Yeah, and and that was playing on the fact that I think at the end of Blade Runner, you're left with the idea that um, Decker is a uh, replicant and things like mm -hmm. that. So I was playing around with that idea. So again, didn't know anything about what was going to happen in 2049. Uh, and they came back straight away and said, look, we really love your cityscapes. Mm -hmm. We really want you to do something with the cityscapes. So I quickly did a, a scribble of a, another idea. You should have that. Um, yep. The, the one with the... With the uh, very, uh, very, very rough. Yeah, hold on. Oh, the, the wherever you were from, the with the red, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. I, got, I think I pulled it up now with the Japanese lettering. That's right, uh, and yeah, so the, I mean, if you look at that, that is so rough. Mm -hmm. But they're looking at my previous work, and kind of they'll the they're getting the idea of how that's going to turn out, uh, mm -hmm. and then they just said yes straight away. Okay, that's that's cool. Um, how how did you or was it just basically you you, you froze a still on the. On the, on the trailer and then came up with this or um... I do, so I, I tried to you look at the trailer as many times as possible and you, mm -hmm. you're trying to piece together what's going on what's the relationship between the characters um, and visually I think that stood out with the big hologram advert mm -hmm. and I knew there was going to be some kind of relationship between the two so yeah so I wanted him passing by so yeah, I, I, you try and grab as much information as you can. Um, the end, so for especially the kind of the design of the car because that's new. Yeah. Uh, some of the adverts that appear, but the rest of the cityscape in the back is just me drawing a cityscape really and just making it look Blade Runner-ish. Mm -hmm. What was the, what is the difference? Because you sent me another one. I just pulled this up real up, uh, quick up. It has the the title under uh, the, the title underneath. Is is there a difference, or is there, or why did you cut this out, or did uh, yeah? So originally, uh, to promote the film, they had the title at the bottom. Okay. Uh, for the screen printed version, we wanted to make it more of an art print mm -hmm. uh, and play around with uh, a kind of thirty six eighteen format, mm -hmm. which is like a nice letterbox format to play around with. 
Okay, and um, how was how was uh, when 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 is all said and done? I mean, you you send it out digitally, or how does it work with uh, BNG or in general? Yeah, so uh, I really work. Every, everything's digital. It, it's just the ease of use. Uh, send files and things like that. So I do tend to work very much in layers and colors, mm -hmm. ready for screen printing. Okay, perfect. And um, what is what is uh, did did you did you have um, a choice in how how the print is going to come out, or was it a decision by the printer or by bottleneck? How how did how this work? Uh, yeah, so uh, with holographic foil, uh, I've been playing around with that over the last couple of prints. Um, I really like how it kind of brings things to life a little bit. Uh, so like windows and lights work really well because uh, mm -hmm. it gives them a shimmer like a city. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so that was my choice to go with the hollow foil and to make it regular as well because that's the main feature. Mm -hmm. Is 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 there a certain like paper or like a like a printing process you prefer like the G clay ones or do you always want to do screen prints? Um, How's that for you? Uh, I, I really enjoy the screen printing process. Um, you have to think. I think with Gickly, you get you can use any colors. There's there's no limit. I think mm. with screen printing, uh, you kind of thinking about colors are very early on because the more colors you use, the more expensive it's going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes you think more about paper. So you can be limiting yourself to six colors, and I'll kind of enjoy that restriction mm -hmm. uh, it makes me think more about my colors how the colors are going to work and how they're going to use uh, how they're going to be used uh, so i kind of en I enjoy them them restrictions them rules uh, it helps me focus a little bit more mm -hmm. okay and uh, how's it as in the future i mean it came out on april 10th i think it was right the, yes uh, yeah okay yeah. and uh, or was it in march I, I i don't recall i think april 10th right but yeah, it came out. Yes. It came out a couple of weeks, oh, yeah. uh, a couple of weeks back. So, um, but is there is there going to be any APs in the future uh, in your store? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, yes. Yeah, so I I tend to get my APs. They get shipped over because it's it's naturally sold in the US. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I I tend to get my APs in about three weeks or, or something like that, mm -hmm. and then. Depending on what's going on at the moment with posts and everything. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I bought some of your mystery uh, tubes, so I'm still waiting right, on yes, that. But, yeah. but oh, Julia cool, said. Brilliant. Cool. Uh, Cheers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're so, welcome. Yeah, so, yeah, you'll appreciate there's a bit of a delay with posting and things. Yeah, I, I, I saw that. Julia yeah. updated so, us oh, in the group. Yeah, hopefully soon in the next couple of months. Yeah, I'm looking really forward for it because uh, I missed out on the Tron one because I said. All my, right, okay. Because I, I set my timer wrong. Oh, no. Because uh, I think there was like a when it came out, there was like they sh they changed the daylight times or something. Yes. And yes. then I had the timer an hour later because I forgot that something oh. was changed. And <laughs> yeah, I was really really sad. I remember oh. that day. <laughs> but okay, let's get let's get back to Blade Runner. Um, the last thing I want to do, um, because you gave us a good brief overview about uh, how this print came about and. Uh, now, since I do a lot of movie reviews actually on my blog uh, next to the poster stuff, um, I want a little short review okay. of the movie. Uh, what did you like? What, what, what did you like? What didn't you like? And a rating from zero to ten. Okay. Uh, I, I remember it, it's a strange film. It's, it's twenty forty nine. Uh, did you watch it in the movies in the cinema? Or yes, I did. Uh, everybody, all the reviews were coming back about how the sound yeah. is spectacular. Yeah, yeah. So I went to the cinema. There must have been about four people in there. Really? You, you, it, it was empty. It, it, it was really strange. Uh, yeah, absolutely loved the film. It, mm. It's it's a B movie though. It's it's a B movie with a two hundred and fifty million pound budget. And I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> I don't know why the studios even thought it was going to be commercially successful. I don't know. I mean, it's for me. It was like I encourage everybody to see it because, like, I think um, uh, this is a movie that's made for the cinema. Like, you have yes. to watch it in the cinema. It doesn't. It's, it's not the same at home. Yeah. And and I think that's 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 what that's why it was there. And yeah, I'm, I'm wondering myself because I really loved the movie. I gave it great reviews when I uh, uh, when I first initially reviewed it, and um, I think it was a nine point five or a ten for me. So. Uh, <laughs> Really, really love that movie. Um, yeah, especially and, like the cinematography and all of that. It and the, and the thing is, it's following such an iconic film 
yeah. you're always kind of worried that it's it's never going to live up to the original film. Or did you think it um, live up, lived up? Or yeah, I I okay. think it um, it understood the original film, mm -hmm. uh, and then and then then expanded on the ideas that were kind of laid down in the original film. So mm -hmm. it's it's one of those rare instances where you know, like Alien and Aliens and things like yeah, that. Yeah. Both films are complementing each other really well. Uh, yeah, I absolutely loved it. Uh, okay, well, how would you rate it then? You know, yeah, it, it'd be in my top five films. Okay. Yeah, uh, which, which tend to change every so often. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think you can, it's, it's a good film to rewatch. You, you can go mm -hmm. back and have a look at it again. Uh, and like the original Blade Runner, Every time you rewatch it, you notice something new, discover something new. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's a film that will be talked about in another 10 years' time. Yeah, uh, I think so too. And um, my last question is, since we talked about Blade Runner now, and uh, Denis Villeneuve, who did, uh, who, who did this film, uh, he's doing Dune. Uh, yes. Are you excited about that one? I haven't got as much invested in Dune. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll admit I've never read the books. Uh, That's fine. I, I yeah. have neither, but yeah. I got a couple uh, of friends I, who are like really love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the David Lynch version um, for all its flaws as well. Mm. Uh, but yes, I think his cinematography is is outstanding. Mm. Uh, so I, I'm definitely going to be interested in what he does with you. Would you love to do something for that as well? I've been asked. All right. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yes. <laughs> yes. So is, yeah, is, I'm going to have to read. I have to read the book though. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but the, the question is, um, because I think I, I heard about this, the licensing is probably very complicated. Because like I talked um, with with uh, when I talked to Greg Ruth the other day, which uh, the the podcast is coming out next week, so look for that people. Um, but he said he's like basically calling Mondo like every other week and asking, hey guys, do you have the Dune refer uh, the the Dune license and to, to make this happen. Yeah, it's uh, especially because it's a property where the license can be split over different things. Yeah, uh, and and cinema, you know, film posters have a, a, the other complication of the actors on their rights to their likenesses. Mm -hmm. It can get very complicated very quickly. All right. Okay, thank you uh, for your feedback and on your print, and it's really really cool print. I uh, hope to get another one in the future maybe if, if there's some more because i like the gun idea as well maybe it comes to fruition at some point um let's hope so and yes. maybe to do things happen soon i'm looking forward fingers to crossed yes <laughs> exactly thank you for your time man thank you cheers <laughs>